welcome to Perth City Talks. Today we're at West Australian Parliament House and we're investigating the issue of GMO. We're talking to Chris Tallentire from Conservation Council of Western Australia about GMO. Chris, what's the first thing you'd like to say to the audience about GMO food? Look, I think West Australian people have let their views be well known. They don't want to eat GM food. And that's why the present state government moratorium on the production of commercial gen genetically modified crops is a good thing. It reflects the wishes of the West Australian public. Now, Chris, I understand that in addition to concerns about food, you've got concerns about fibre crops like cotton and their inter interaction with the food chain. Could you say something about that, please? Well, right now we're seeing an incredible amount of pressure coming from industry groups who are very pro-GMs that we lift the moratorium on cotton so that we could, in fact, see GM cotton produced in the Ord River area. And that would be disastrous because, in fact, although we all think of cotton as being a, a fibre, it actually does have a substantial percentage of a cotton crop that ends in the food supply chain. In fact, there are estimates around that it's between 35 and 40 per cent of the, the crop that you see in a cotton crop that ends up in the food supply chain, mostly as cotton seed oil. So we could be eating GM produce if we allow the production of commercial GM cotton in the north of the state. The main drivers behind the push for more GMO in our society are obviously commercial interests. Which companies are they and where are they based? There are a number of companies, but most famously it's Monsanto, an American company, and uh, they've invested a lot of money into developing gene technology and they want to recoup all their investment. They're also well known for their involvement with agricultural chemicals. It's some time since Rachel Carson wrote her now famous book and our society hasn't yet dealt with the ramifications of the cocktail of chemicals in the environment. How do you feel about our society globally starting to move towards messing around with the basic building blocks of life without having dealt with what we've been doing in the last, say, 50 years? We barely understand what the building blocks of life actually are, and yet here we go, putting genes from one species into another. It's a really risky business. Chris, what do you think companies like Monsanto, what do you think their main motivation is for this push with GMO food? When you've got a big company like Monsanto involved, their primary purpose is to make big profits. So they see that owning the genetic material of different crops, food crops, fibre crops, as being a means of actually making people pay to produce things that for the history of humanity we've taken for granted as being something that we can produce for free. We just need to get the seed for wheat and we can have a wheat crop but in the future if if we were to go through with the Monsanto dream we would actually have to buy that seed from the Monsanto company or another one of the gene tech companies be a company that sells the genetic material and you could tell your customer now if, if weeds come up with this you have to use one of our chemicals to wipe out any weeds that would go with this crop and that way you can have the the fiber crop or the food crop but not have the weeds it's clever marketing as the head of WA Conservation Council, I presume you're subjected to the criticism of being anti-development. How would you answer your critics in relation to GMO and future food production in Australia about, about that accusation? Presently around the world, Western Australia is known as a producer of clean, healthy, green produce. We've got to maintain that reputation. And in fact, we even get a premium price when we do produce a GM-free clean green product and that's reflected in the prices for GM free canola where we can sell that into Europe at a premium price and Japan as well has been traditionally prepared to pay a premium price for a GM free product. So in summary you'd, you would say Conservation Council and yourself are pro sensible development in our country? Western Australia has so much potential we've got so many opportunities we just have to make sure we make the right decisions and not get lulled into crazy ideas by people who are just driven by a profit motive. Maggie what points would you like to make about the proposed introduction of GMO into our food production systems? There's several concerns from a scientific point of view one of which is that the product is not tested as rigorously as we would like it to be um, the other thing is there's no way you can segregate non-GM crops from GM crops. They look identical. There's no, on, a, on a surface, it looks exactly the same. So you can't you know, segregate them, you can't separate them. So there are considerable worries about that for farming communities. 
um, there's liability issues as well. You know, who's got the patent laws to consider? So the non-GM farmer can get sued. Um, and scientifically, it hasn't been proven to be very successful elsewhere. There's a relevant comparison here, Maggie, between two words, agriculture, which means life, and agribusiness. How do you see that in scientific terms, the comparison? With agriculture, you can, as a farmer, save your own seeds, you can work your soil, but with agribusiness, there is no chance of actually working your soil because there's also studies that have shown that whatever toxin comes out of that plant goes into the root of the plant and into the soil. And what impact that has on soil microbiology, we do not know. It has not been tested adequately. So those are other concerns. If your soil has been affected, and already we have very poor soils in Western Australia, what can you plant after that? So there, there are serious concerns with that as well. Maggie, what sort of initiatives would you like to see to prevent the spread of GMO into our society? I believe that state government should retain and extend the moratorium that we've got at the moment on the growing, commercial growing of GM crops in Western Australia. In Australia, there should be tougher laws on what produce is brought in, federal laws on labelling. Um, we should really look at what is being brought into our country from overseas and perhaps um, address those issues as well. Then consumers are given a clear choice as to what they can eat and what they can and cannot buy. Maggie, over the last 50 years or so, we've seen an increasing recognition by science and society that everything in, in nature is interconnected, including us, sort of the Gaia hypothesis. How, how is that relevant to the discussions about GMO? Yes, you're absolutely correct that everything in nature is interconnected. So imagine if you bring in a GM crop, say canola, now that crosses with potentially a weed, and that weed then is home to an aphid, an aphid that potentially could affect potato crops and then the potato farmers suffer because the crops are obviously affected and we pay a premium price for what's left. So everything is interconnected. What happens in the soil affects us eventually, what happens in the food chain affects us eventually. Now with health there is no guarantee at the moment that it's not affecting us, there's a showing increase of allergies and um, perhaps even cancer, there are no known studies at present to show what's causing them. John, why are you interested personally and as a politician in campaigning and using the political processes to restrict the spread of GMO within Western Australia and Australia? Well, as a West Australian whose many relatives are still involved in farming, I've certainly been uh, well informed of their hesitations regarding GM as a crop but more so since I've been Parliamentary Secretary for Health and I'm well aware of all the testing that's required on any foodstuffs and medicines and I'm, I'm quite horrified to see that we nowhere near going down the path to even having early, uh, safe, healthy recognition of GM foods. So clearly to me, uh, GM may or may not prove to be a godsend in West Australian conditions or Australian conditions and Australia is such a big continent, conditions vary, soil types vary, interaction with flora and fauna vary. We don't have enough information yet and the onus is on people who want to benefit from production of GM in an economic sense to do the hard yards, to do the expensive research to prove its health and medicinal benefits. John, you represent the people of Western Australia on the Food Standards Association that covers Australia and New Zealand. What is that organisation doing and are you happy with what's happening there? Well, certainly the other health and food ministers that are involved there, we are very much aware that we haven't had full information that the research hasn't been done. Now, in the separate gene tech 